Every now and again, someone puts out a tweet that is so shocking, so outrageous in its factual incorrectness that it requires a response. Yesterday, it came from Southern Poverty Law Center. Viva Fry, Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and this is Winston the Westie, who still has not learned how to pee outside. I literally took him for a 20 minute walk. The second we get into the house, pee pee on the kitchen floor. All right, now in any case, it is nap time for Winston so I can do this vlog. Yesterday, I am surfing through Twitter, looking for the latest news, looking for inspiration for a vlog, when I come across a tweet from the Southern Poverty Law Center, which reads as follows. Loaded guns, zip ties, threats, several injuries, and five murders. But ask at send John Ronson about the violent Jan 6 insurrection at the US Capitol, and he won't call it for what it was. Hashtag year in hate, hashtag refuse hate. I read this tweet and as that famous scene from Billy Madison was rolling in the back of my head, I said, I've got to go fact check this tweet and then probably respond to this tweet. And within 30 seconds of fact checking this tweet, I came to the conclusion that not only was this tweet factually incorrect, this tweet needed to be called out. And I took to Twitter to express my discontent with their tweet and tweeted as follows. Even by the grossly biased standards of at PolitiFact, this is straight up misinformation at SPL Center. Unless quote, medical emergencies, end quote, qualify as, quote, murder, end quote. You are spreading misinformation. And I included the PolitiFact, if your time is short, summary of the fact check, which we will get to in a few minutes. You know what? My mistake. Let's get to the PolitiFact fact check summary right now. If your time is short, Four people died as Trump supporters breached the U.S. Capitol on Jan 6, including one woman who was fatally shot and three people who suffered medical emergencies. Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick died January 7th. A Capitol Police statement that day said he, quote, was injured while physically engaging with protesters, end quote. Investigations into his death and the cause of his injuries are ongoing. Two other law enforcement officers who were present at the Capitol have since died by suicide and more than 100 officers were injured. Now we will get to the cause of death of Brian Sicknick a little later in this vlog and I just want to preface this with the following disclaimer. I am not saying anything of my own personal opinion in this vlog. I am just summarizing the fact checkers fact check of the situation and mainstream media's coverage of the situation to determine the truthfulness of this tweet coming out of the Southern Poverty Law Center. The PolitiFact fact check says that one protester was shot dead by the police. Her name was Ashley Babbitt, it says that three other protesters died of medical emergencies the day of, and that Officer Brian Sicknick died and they were still trying to determine his cause of death. That and two other police officers apparently committed suicide in the days following the riot. From those set of facts that were publicly available at the time the Southern Poverty Law Center made their tweets, we get to a tweet where they claim five people were murdered at the January 6th riots. How can the Southern Poverty Law Center get from those set of facts to a tweet purporting that five people were murdered the day of the January 6th riots? They can't. They deleted their tweet and they retweeted a new tweet which was worded as follows. Weapons, zip ties, threats, several injuries, and five related deaths. But ask at send John Ronson about the violent Jan 6 insurrection at the US Capitol and he won't call it for what it was. Hashtag year and hate, hashtag refuse hate. So the Southern Poverty Law Center discreetly went from loaded guns to weapons, from five murders to five related deaths without so much as an apology, a correction, or a formal retraction. To which I had to respond as follows. Sorry, at SPL Center, the internet doesn't forget. Barring an apology and a correction, quietly deleting a tweet and pretending it didn't happen just adds further dishonesty to the initial dishonesty. And even their corrected tweet had me asking questions. What were these deaths and how were they related to the incidents that occurred on January 6th? And I had to go look into it and I've got to tell you, I'm not sure their second tweet is much better than their first. I have been following the news from before, during, and after January 6th. I have heard the media spouting off these media talking points. Five people died during the January 6th riots. I figured it's about time, given this context, to look into exactly how those five people died. We know how Ashley Babbitt died. I believe there's an investigation going on into that incident. But how did the other people who died that day die? And so I took 15 or 20 minutes to fact check what the Southern Poverty Law Center ought to have fact checked. And I've got to tell you, even their claim that these were related deaths is questionable at best. From the New York Times. These are the five people who died in the Capitol riot. A police officer was beaten, a rioter was shot, and three others died during the rampage. Now, this article is from January 11th, and it indicates that there has been an update in the cause of death of Brian Sicknick, which we're going to get into, but let's just see what this article had to say as of January 11th. Update. New information has emerged regarding the death of the Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick that questions the initial cause of his death provided by officials close to the Capitol Police. One had dreamed of becoming a police officer and was injured in a clash with rioters. One was an Air Force veteran 
veteran and a fervent supporter of President Trump who was shot by the police. Three others were Trump loyalists, including one who sold kangaroos dressed like the president, who suffered what authorities called, quote, medical emergencies, end quote. These five people from disparate backgrounds and different corners of the country now share one fate. Their lives all ended last week as a mob incited by Mr. Trump stormed the Capitol. Well, that is one heck of a narrative there, the New York Times, but it's a little light on facts as to what the nature of these medical emergencies was, so I had to continue fishing on the interwebs. In a fact check by Alex Kasprak, did five people die during Jan 6 Capitol riot? Claim, five people died during the Jan 6, 2021 U.S. Capitol riot. Rating, true. But, as they say, the devil is in the details, so let's go ahead and read the details of this fact check. One adult female and two adult males appear to have suffered from separate medical emergencies, which resulted in their deaths, Conte said. At the time of this reporting, the identities of these four individuals has been publicly confirmed by law enforcement. At that second press conference, Conte identified the other three fatalities as well. Benjamin Phillips, 50, from Greentown, Pennsylvania. Kevin Greeson, 55, from Athens, Alabama, and Roseanne Boylan, 34, of Kennesaw, Georgia. According to reporting from Alabama.com, Greeson's son said his father died of a heart attack. There were unconfirmed reports echoed by at least one journalist who was on the ground who later deleted the tweet that one of the adult males included in this tally died of a heart attack after accidentally tasing himself. Snopes has determined that although one man did die of a heart attack, reports that a taser was involved were false. On Jan 8, 2020, the Associated Press confirmed a fifth death, that of Capitol police officer Brian Sicknick, who died, quote, from injuries suffered during the riot, end quote. We are going to get back to Officer Sicknick's cause of death in a second, but right now we can clearly see that when they are referring to medical emergencies, they are referring to things such as heart attacks. Someone who suffered a heart attack during the riot is now included as someone who died as a result of the riot. Agree or disagree with the correlation, the categorizing of the deaths, at the very least you need to know what they are doing. When they say five people died during the January 6th Capitol riots, they are including the woman, Ashley Babbitt, who was shot by police, three people who had medical emergencies, and included in those medical emergencies are things such as heart attacks. So while suffering a heart attack clearly is not murder, which is why the Southern Poverty Law Center obviously deleted their first false and misleading tweet, it's not even clear that a heart attack is related to the incident. Come to your own conclusions, at the very least now you know the facts and you know what they are including in the deaths that occurred on January 6th. But now let's move into the cause of death of Officer Sicknick. In the week after the January 6th Capitol riots, the New York Times was actually referring to it as the killing of Officer Brian Sicknick. The New York Times. The FBI questions dozens in the killing of a Capitol Police officer and other assaults by a pro-Trump mob. But it would seem that at the time the New York Times was reporting this, they ought to have known better. And again, I'm not expressing my opinion. I am now just reading from an article in the National Review. National Review. The Times corrects the record on Officer Sicknick's death, sort of, by Andrew C. McCarthy. A few days ago, the New York Times quietly, quote, updated its report published over a month earlier asserting that Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick had been killed by being struck with a fire extinguisher during the January 6th riot. According to the update, quote, new information has emerged regarding the death of the Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick that questions the initial cause of his death provided by officials close to the Capitol Police, end quote. As I detailed in a column last week, what the Times calls, quote, new information, end quote, actually began emerging the same day the paper filed its January 8th report. That report was, and still is entitled, quote, Capitol Police Officer Dies from injuries in pro-Trump rampage, end quote. It was not the only such Times report from that day. There was another entitled, quote, he dreamed of being a police officer, then he was killed by a pro-Trump mob, end quote. Yet as early as the morning of January 8, KHOU in Houston reported that Sicknick had died from a stroke. The KHOU story made no mention of the officers being struck by a fire extinguisher. The article in the National Review is actually a very compelling read if you have the time to read it, but I just want to focus on the last paragraph because it makes a very strong point. Irrespective of whether impeachment had ever been pursued, it is vital that we have an accurate accounting of what happened on January 6th, including an accurate accounting of what happened to Officer Brian Sicknick. And since impeachment was pursued, we are also owed an explanation of why the House managers did not clarify the circumstances of Sicknick's death after making an explosive allegation about how it came to pass. Again, none of this is my personal opinion. This is all from actual reporting done at the time and subsequent to and a New York Times correction of what actually happened to Officer Sicknick, so much so that even PolitiFact had to update their fact check. What we know about Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick's death by Bill McCarthy. If your time is short, 
Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick died Jan 7 after he was injured, quote, while physically engaging, end quote, with rioters at the U.S. Capitol, according to a Capitol Police press release. But the cause of his death remains under investigation. An early report from the New York Times said Sicknick was struck during the riot with a fire extinguisher. The Times recently revised that report, prompting criticism. CNN reported that investigators are considering whether a chemical irritant like pepper or bear spray played a role. On Jan 8, Sicknick's brother told ProPublica that Sicknick had texted about being pepper sprayed. ProPublica's report also mentioned a stroke. Sick Nick's mother recently said she thinks he suffered a stroke, the Daily Mail reported. Prompted to do my own fact check after reading the Southern Poverty Law Center's tweet on the issue that five people were murdered at the January 6th riots, it turns out that one person, Ashley Babbitt, was killed by police and the other four people died from medical emergencies and Officer Sicknick appears to have died from a stroke, according to his own mother. The deaths of Officer Sicknick and the three others who died of medical emergencies at the riot is a tragedy, but exploiting their deaths for political purposes is an outrage. And the fact that the New York Times, the Southern Poverty Law Center, would make these outlandish claims to steer the narrative in their direction only to quietly correct those claims is itself also an outrage. The mainstream media seems intent not on providing us information, but on providing us misinformation and narrative to support their foregone conclusions, and that is an outrage. All right, and I've actually steamed up the car with anger, but if you like my videos and you like my content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, drop a comment in the comment section below to feed the algorithm. If you want to support the channel, you know how to support the channel. All of these support links are in the pinned comment, but more important than all of that, take care of yourselves, check in on friends and family, make sure everyone around you is doing well. Double check the information you are being fed because it is not always accurate and sometimes it is outright misleading. And now you know your vlog. Peace out.